Hello everyone. Welcome to our Remote Healing Circle webinar. Um, I hope you can all hear me. Um, this is the first and many more to come. And it's so uh, very wonderful for me and Jeff to be here with you. Thank you for signing up. 99% uh, of our work is done remotely. So um, we're, we're very uh, excited to actually um, speak with you in person. Some of you already know us um, through some of the work that uh, you've been sharing with us. Some of you know our voices um, through the uh, Sacred Self Healing Course or some of our energy processes or meditation tools. But for some of you, this is the first time you're hearing our voice too. So um, welcome. Mm -hmm. Um, this webinar, um, the purpose of this we webinar is to increase your awareness about potential karmic aspects and propensities in your life and how they possibly affect your relationships. This is one of the most frequently asked questions um, to us and we found that Raising awareness about how karmic aspects play out in our relationships really helps to um, resolve some issues. We also want to encourage you to become a more active participant in your life. Um, learn about our self-healing tools, of course, and the main objective of this webinar and our following webinars is to ask questions. So you will see um, a few icons here. You can ask questions by typing them to us, or you can actually raise your hand, which will indicate to us that you have a question that you would like to ask live. Um, after we did a short introduction into the subject, you, we, you will have the opportunity to ask live questions, and um, we will answer them. Um, this webinar is uh, coupled with our healing circles um, that take place once a month. Uh, in those healing circles, we do a remote energy work with um, random participants every month and subjects that come up that are important for our personal journey. Um, this particular subject, karma and karmic propensities, or karmic uh, aspects is the subject of our next healing circle tomorrow. Um, we will give you a brief overview over those uh, karmic propensities, how to identify karmic patterns, and then how to deal with those karmic aspects. My name is Jona Brindis. I am the founder and owner of Transcodes. Um, I'm also the main energy coach and I lead the uh, Women's Healing Circle. And uh, with me on the panel is Jeff Casper, founder and owner of uh, selfunification.com, also works as an energy coach and um, leads the Men's Healing Circle. Um, Jeff, would you like to say hello to everyone? Hello, everybody. Welcome and thank you. Transcodes is an organization that um, some of you may know um, offers um, energy work tools, energy work um, education, and a lot of energy work services. It is a platform for other trans coaches or other energy workers. Some of them um, were trained at Transcodes and some of them already had their specialization. Um, we have a variety of uh, services that you can look up at transcodes.com. The remote healing circles are um, monthly group sessions, remote energy group sessions, and they consist of um, like instructions with an introduction into the subject and a 60 minute remote energy session. We separated men and women in this particular um, healing circle because we found that there are gender specific aspects to our journey. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, we want this to be an introductory um, service 
for remote energy. So the fee we're charging is only um, $35 per participant. The trans coaches that do the healing circles with us um, are Catherine DiPietro, who couldn't be here today, Alicia England. Um, Alicia, are you there? Can you say hi to any to the um, attendees? Maybe. I'm here. Hey, Yona. Yay. Hey, everybody. Hey, Alicia. <laughs> cool. And uh, Jeff leads the uh, uh, remote men's healing group with Roger, who's in a plane right now. So um, uh, Alicia, um, Jeff, and me are the only represent representatives of the healing circles. Uh, what do we do in the healing circles? Just real brief, um, we address gender-specific aspects of our journey there, um, which have mostly to do with um, the aspects of how to find back to our true self and with it, um, the connection to our inner divinity. A lot of this has to do with uh, remembering the connection with the divine feminine and masculine within. And so very often this journey um, ends up being a self-healing journey of uh, balancing those masculine and feminine aspects out. Big part of it is also letting go of um, patterns and programs that we discover on this journey. And this is what we do during those remote energy transmissions. We facilitate learning how to feel, read and direct inner energies. So it's very much a self-healing event rather than us doing anything. We're just facilitating that inner connection and help people to listen to their inner guidance and learn how to read their inner signaling. Before I get into the subject real quick, um, I wanted to just briefly um, make a quick comment. I noticed that only about half of the attendees of this um, webinar actually knows us or worked with us before. Um, Jeff and I have uh, been in this field for probably more than 10 years. Um, I've worked as a coach for um, now almost um, 25 years. So a lot of the um, insights that we share with you and the people that work with us um, do not come from one particular school. We've had many different teachers and um, many different trainings. And so the way we would like to um, perpetrate or you know, bring across this inner journey work is non-religious and non-affiliated with any particular teaching. All our tools, our services are based on self-healing. They're based on internalizing our inner connection. Well, understanding karma and karma, karmic propensities is um, quite a controversial subject for most people because it collides or it can collide with um, um, religious or um, other kind of mental programming. So we're trying to keep it as neutral as possible. What does karma mean? Well, for most people, our karma means um, bad karma in the sense of I do something bad and then something bad will happen to me. That's actually not um, that wrong <laughs> of a view. But in reality, there is no good or bad karma, really. Um, from an energetic point of view, karma is an energetic charge or an energetic imbalance that seeks to balance itself out. In other words, let's say I thought something or I did something that wasn't congruent to my inner integrity. There will be an imbalance inside of me that wants to to be balanced out and the circumstances will be created accordingly so that I can do that. So what goes around comes around is actually a universal truth in that we create the circumstances. Good karma or bad karma 
just doesn't have anything to do with luck. And we will investigate um, how karma is actually tied to some of our own actions or deeds and how it's not tied to what we personally did in this lifetime. One of the most questions people ask themselves is like, why me, why now? Uh, from our perspective, that's those are the wrong questions. Uh, why me, why now? really um, distracts from the actual problem, namely um, how the ego, um, perp you know, continues um, certain charges that we've built up. The question why again is actually a much better question because it leads us to investigating those different aspects that can build up throughout our lifetime. So what is the purpose of my personal karma? Um, that is a question that only each and every one of, of us can answer to themselves. And the way to do that is to first look at um, well, what, do, what have we identified as repetitive patterns in our life. Um, you will see uh, like a lot of poll uh, in your uh, screen there where you're being asked if you've ever seen repetitive patterns in your life and I'm just curious to see how many of you have actually even thought about that. So karma is um, tied to many different aspects but one of the fastest way to identify karma is to identify patterns, to identify um, uh, repetition in life. Just to sort of brush over the subject very quickly, we differentiate between three different kinds of karmic aspects. So when we begin to discover um, repetitive patterns or even programs, um, we look at three different aspects. The first one is inherited karmic aspects. The second one is uh, karmic debt and the setup that we have in our lives. And the third one, which is... Um, probably the most obvious to most of us are karmic relationship aspects. Um, oh, this it just skipped over the uh, uh, karmic inheritance. Karmic inheritance is um, anything that was uh, passed on to us either from a collective, um, cultural, ethnic or tribal background which means um, it can be anything from like the whole humanity's karma to my um, tribal karma or my family karma. Very often investigating um, inherited karmic patterns can really be a game changer for persons to see how certain karmic patterns have been inherited from one generation to another. In karmic clearing work, we understand that um, karmic aspects get inherited um, up to seven generations. So if there is anything in my family, say, or even just in my tribal or my collective background, seven generations back, that's like almost 250 years, that was unresolved or that created um, a lot of energetic charge, it can still affect me today. Um, karmic family patterns or karmic family aspects are probably one of the most common karmic aspects people discover on their journey. So sorry the slide um, didn't show up here. The next aspect is the karmic debt and the setup that's associated with it. Karmic debt is something that has to do with what we personally built. It goes into the direction of what comes around um, what goes around comes around. So it means that whenever we um, act or think or um, feel, I want to say, out of um, something that is not true to us, something that is incongruent to us, something that violates our integrity, something that hurts us, something that affects us energetically, we are building up um, karmic debt. And the more buildup we have, 
the stronger the charge. Um, so karma, as it wants to rebalance that out, in return creates dispositions or circumstances for healing those incongruences. So what comes around, go, or what goes around, comes around, really just means that anything that we build up that wasn't congruent for us, or that hurt us, or that built an energetic charge, wants to be healed, even if it may be hard for us to see it, because of the inheritance aspect, for example, or if it's related to past lives, if that's something you choose to believe in. The main thing to understand with karmic debt and the setup is that there is a manifestation component to it, which means that we will actually create, unconsciously create the circumstances that allow us to have the best disposition to heal those aspects. And sometimes that means that we have to meet perpetrators or that we have to meet harsh circumstances so that we can um, heal a certain aspect in our life. Karmic relationship aspects then are basically the result of the karmic setup. So a lot of times people meet other people in their lives and engage into relationships, not necessarily just romantic relationships, to heal a specific karmic aspect. The uh, And I'm touching on a somewhat um, sensitive subject here. Um, the uh, term soulmates um, is very often misunderstood. Soulmates are very often people that we feel attracted to because there is a karmic aspect that we have with them that allows us to heal a certain inherited or karmic debt aspect. So both actually go into a soul agreement with another to resolve a certain problem. So many relationships that we feel as made in heaven <laughs> or um, special are not necessarily um, relationships that are made to last forever. They're mainly there to help us to see, to experience, and to heal certain aspects that we brought into this life. Another way how karmic relationship aspects can uh, influence our life is through engaging in conscious or unconscious karmic ties or bonds with others. This can be anything from wedding vows to um, saying things like, I will die for you, or any type of sort of energetic promise can create a, a tie, a karmic tie to another person. Of course, this is a lot more complicated than I make it sound right now. Um, there's a lot um, that needs to be looked at. And um, this is part of our speciality to help people to see those things. Um, this is not always just related to people that we actually go into partnership with. This can also be related to our own children or our co-workers, our bosses, our friends. Um, most of the people in our life actually play a karmic role. And one of the... Uh, um, main purpose of doing karma work is to free ourselves from those ties so that we can actually start manifesting the kind of relationships and the kind of life that we want. Um, just to, to mention it because it's on the slide, um, ex-husbands, ex-girlfriends um, very often um, present uh, strong karmic uh, relationship ties to us. Uh, we have tools that help people to clear those ties. But, and this is, um, again, one of the things that uh, we try to help others with, is if we hold on to the past ourselves, those ties will continue to be um, energized. 
So one important thing to understand is that if we want to work on these things, we also have to have the willingness um, to let go. Again, um, we're like well, probably five minutes away from you being able to ask questions. So um, you have this little panel there and there is a little icon, shows a little hand, that means raise your hand. Picture um, a room full of um, attendees and me walking around with the microphone. Um, as soon as you raise your hand, um, I can hand over the microphone to you. If you prefer to just type a question and not say it um, live, then you can just type your question there. Um, the next poll, oh, uh, just in case you're interested, um, we have 80%, 82% of people said yes, they have had thing, they have recognized repeating patterns in their life, 18% are not sure. Um, the next question um, that we're going to ask you is if you sometimes feel held back by your karma or by those repeating patterns. Which leads us to the question, um, why should we do something about our karma if it's set anyways? Well, it's not exactly set anyways because the moment we start healing our karma or that energetic charge, we are actually changing our karma. And this is the most important part to understand. If there is anything that you remember from this webinar, this is what you need to remember. The reason why we should do something about our karma is because we can. And how come that we can? In a holographic universe, that's the way um, information in the universe dis displays itself to us energy workers past present and future all happen at the same time in fact through the right focus on the present on the now we can actually feel that past present and future is really just an illusion of our sort of limited brain that needs to have a linear perception. But if we can train our perception to open up and to disengage from the mindset that past is behind us and future is in front of us, we will find that all times are here. And we will also find that all places are here, right now, in the moment. So the main aspect of karmic work is to first change our view of time and understand that it is possible to change the past. It is possible to change the future. And the way we can do this is by focusing on our heart and being present in the moment. Because what is needed to break free from those karmic patterns, those propensities, those repetitions, that karmic wheel, is compassion for ourselves and for others, because others play a karmic role as well. Not just in our life, they have their karmic aspects that they need to resolve and we play a role in their lives. Acceptance, acceptance that there are things in our life that we cannot fully control. Forgiveness. And we will talk about that in a little bit. Humbleness. Self-love love, and most of all willingness to let go. Those are traits or resonances, as we call them, that we can find in our conscious heart connection. Now, it sounds a bit easy, but one of the biggest problems people have is that they can't really connect with their heart and they cannot really stay in the moment because their minds are too active or their emotions are taken over. There's tons of other patterns, you know, inner child stuff, critical inner voice, shadow aspects and so forth that block the inner heart connection. So the main work 
in trying to break free from karma is to focus on the heart connection and to focus being present. And because that isn't easy, or not always at least, we sometimes need a lot of humor too. So that's something we're trying to incorporate too. So what can we do? Um, we can accept, first of all, that there are aspects that we cannot fully control. We can engage into investigating some of our karmic ties by simply looking at them. We can learn how to consciously clear karmic ties that are not needed anymore. We can change our views of our personal circumstances, like do I see myself as a victim of the world, of others, or is there maybe a deeper purpose to those things that keep repeating in my life? Most of all though, and this counts for anything in life really, it's about identifying unhealthy and especially repetitive patterns. And then of course, to replace them with healthier patterns. And one of the things that we can do to, um, for instance, balance out karmic debt is making good, making amends, trying to do better. You know, if I've been ripping off people and stealing from people, then with my new awareness, I may choose to make, donation, make donations or engage myself in charity work or offer services for free. Those would just be like simple examples for how we can make good. Um, the second poll, if uh, you guys feel like held back by your karma, um, got answered with 89% uh, of you yes and 11% not sure. So this actually represents quite common um, answers. The next question is very simple. Have you ever done active karma work before or not? That's just something um, we are interested in. I will now hand over um, the microphone to Jeff, who is on the panel here and who will help out um, to uh, answer some of your questions. And um, I just get the message from some of you that uh, the screen is stuck somewhere. So I'm just going to close the poll. And um, I hope this is better. Um, Jeff, are you ready to um, take some of the questions? Yes. Um, can you hear me okay? Yep. I hope everyone can hear Jeff. If you want to ask a question, there, is a, there are a few questions out there already, Jeff. I don't know if you can see them on your screen. It's no, the question mark behind the name. Um, so those are text questions, and if you guys um, want to actually speak out loud and ask the question live here with us, then you need to push this uh, raise your hand button. I can't see that part right now for some you reason. You cannot so see that part? Yeah, for some reason I can't. Uh, okay, so would you like to uh, come over here? <laughs> <laughs> we, we're actually in the same house, but not in the same rooms. <laughs> so, um, uh, so uh, do you want to come over, honey? <laughs> All right. Oh, cool. Okay. All right. So here is the first question. And we we have a few questions that were asked, asked ahead of time, um, which I'm not sure you – I don't think you saw them. But I, I will. Saw, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. you guys, guys just go ahead. Okay. So the first question we have is um, – how can we work upon karma that is linked with past life or past lives, especially if that link involves not only the need for healing and forgiveness to ourselves, but also past life ancestry relations? When you work with past life karma, a lot of times you may not even know it. Uh, a lot of times karmic debt in those situations uh, will just come up in your own lives. And sometimes you get those experiences where, as you work upon it, you'll have these visions of past lives pop up, or you'll have um, visions of people in your past lives pop up. That's all fine and dandy. And if it does come up, it's fine to ask for forgiveness or, you know, 
do the right process there by saying, you know, I understand this hurt. Um, I know what I did wasn't probably okay. But for the most part, when it comes to past lives, most of the time, the things that are current, like Yona talked about in our karmic relationships, we set them up in this lifetime by healing it in this lifetime, it heals the past as well. So it kind of depends upon how um, you go about things. And if you're a visual person, because people who are really visual have these amazing visions about past lives. And if you don't, it's okay. Everybody's different. So the key thing is to remember that sometimes when you work on karma, um, it will come up as just a major release in your work. And that typically heals not only now, but also the past, like Yona mentioned. Can I make a comment? Sure. Past life work or past life retrieval is something we actually don't promote. And the reason for that is because it can be very distractive and people very often get um, caught up in the specialness of past lives. Yeah. Um, what we do promote, though, and this uh, is actually a really good question, we do promote to go into the clearing of ancestral um, uh, ties by um, uh, clearing um, the, our karmic lineage, mm -hmm. which means we go back seven generations on the mother's side and we go forward seven generations. A lot of our energy work tools have past, present, and future um, healings or clearings at the same time. So the best way um, to do this is to first go into the clearing of your lineage because in your lineage you will find that a lot of these things are not even from your past lives. They're very often from your ancestors' lives. Um, another question that was asked um, in this regard is what do we do once we identify things that have been passed down from our uh, lineage, from our fathers, our grandfathers, our mothers, our grandmothers? Well, half of the job is actually done by seeing that. Mm -hmm. That's a big one. Right there. Just acknowledging it. Yeah, just yeah. just seeing it and acknowledging it is a, is a really big one. Uh, one of the other things that um, can be done, and this is mostly done in energy work, um, is to create a new sense of compassion mm -hmm. for our own stuff as well as the stuff of our forefathers. You'll, what you do is you continue the work and as you continue to connect deeper and deeper to your heart, the compassion and understanding increases instantly and then over time as well. So it's that process of continuing to connect because what you'll start to see and understand in each and every person, not only do they have not to, that you don't have or see, but not only do you have karmic issues and karmic blocks and karmic debt, but so do they. And that can really help you understand that, OK, we're all in this together. And we're all connected and all links. So that can really help and assist in that increase in compassion and understanding. Keep asking questions. Yes, please. Um, we do have uh, a few more written questions that we received before the webinar. But of course, one of the cool features here is that we are here live right now. So you can ask any question um, related to the subject, you know, related to the work, um, this is your opportunity right here. Or if the person who asked the first question has more questions on what we answered, mm -hmm. please feel free. We're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, somebody raised their hand. Uh -oh. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, Julian, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Hello, everyone. Hi, Julian. Hello. Uh, you're calling from Australia, I see. Yes, it's morning over here. Okay, well. Um, I have a question about, um, as a child, being made to feel that females are worthless, mm -hmm. and that came from my father, and my mother was always saying, I am hopeless. 
so everything I did was wrong. And um, mum would always undo it and redo it for me with a bit of anger and frustration, mm. um, even to the point of, you know, I remember if I drew a picture to show my mum, she would tell me, oh, you know, that's not what a tree looks like. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. okay. So it was pretty, like, she was probably very intense with it and also wasn't very connected. Mm -hmm. So I tend to give up and procrastinate. I really see that in myself. Okay. And I can resign myself and just go, I'm just not good enough. Mm -hmm. And I can see in my life where I just get, sometimes I think, oh, well, I can't do that. Or I throw my hands up and get someone else to do it for me mm -hmm. um, to the point where I don't have a driver's license, but I use the excuse of having a green footprint <laughs> as an excuse. How does that work for you? <laughs> I can drive a car, but I just don't bother because... I think I had issues with my mum when she was teaching me to drive and what, you know, just excuses. Mm -hmm. So I have an override that I'm not good enough and I will fail. Even though I can always scrape through stuff, I, I think if I want to really do something, I'll scrape through it, I'll get there. Right. But I do have a feeling of why should I bother? I could drop out. I mean, I've dropped out of society a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I have self-sabotage as well. So what's your main question on that? Because, I mean, there's a lot there and there's a lot going on, but what's your main question about that? Well, my main feeling that I get is that I feel um, helpless mm -hmm. and hopeless. Okay. And I don't feel that I fit in anywhere. Okay. And you, and you'd Not like anywhere. to, or? Sorry? You'd like to fit in, or, you know, the feeling of helpless and hopelessness, yeah. that, that comes from that. I don't feel like, um, I think all my life I've liked not fitting in, but I think that's just an excuse to be, to just reaffirm that I don't fit in. Well, what it feels like, I mean, we all do this, and, and you've got a very interesting situation there where through the stuff with both of your parents, you created a, um, a protection mechanism where you just check out, you developed, um, abilities to get other people to do stuff for you. And that's, that's what we do when we have inner child processes. We create patterns and defenses that allow us to protect our feelings and protect what's going on. Yeah. So in regards of the direct, relationship mm -hmm. with your parents this would be more like an inner child aspect exactly. um you know because it created a wounding or an energetic charge in you um that you can recall you know that is obvious or conscious to you so they're very often um linked to karmic aspects mm -hmm. which we don't really find out until we begin to clear our karmic lineage right then we begin to see how the grandparents have treated the, our parents and how their parents have treated their parents mm -hmm. and so forth. And that, and we begin to, to understand how this was passed down from generation to generation. And with that, and this is sort of the, the bridge between inner child work and karmic work, with that we can create a lot more understanding and mm -hmm. compassion. You know, it helps us to overcome those resentments that we've built up say, towards our parents or towards our life in general. And we open up our horizon towards a collective um, inheritance as well because a lot of the things that you describe are not just specific to your childhood. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, like the need to be perfect mm -hmm. possibly even the need for your parents or your mom to see you as an extension of herself you know so those all indicate that there are aspects unhealed aspects that your mom has mm -hmm. so karma work can help us to see this a bit more clearly and to heal this aspect but inner child work um 
really um, gives us tools to overcome these things, you know, in, specifically in regards to our caretakers or parents. And one of the biggest ones with that is to realize that your parents, although they probably did as good a job as they could have, have all these things going on inside them too. They have an inner child that they're acting out with. They have karmic patterns that they're acting out. Um, part of the healing I had with some of the femininity issues I had was seeing that, you know, in one side of my family is that you could see these patterns going numerous generations back and they build up over time. So that gives you a bit more, even though it's challenging, like what Yona's talking about, it gives you that chance to understand that it's not all them, that they're just acting out those patterns that were dumped onto them. And it can add to that over time. Um, so the process then becomes, like Yona said, is working through the inner child work. Okay, Julian, did that um, sort of answer your question? Yeah, I, and I can see how my parents, I mean, my mum was adopted and abused and um, my father was a refugee. They, their parents were refugees. My great-grandmother was in a prisoner of war in a gulag for 10 years before, you know, the Australian embassy rescued her. So I can see that being a displaced person. <laughs> well, there's a lot of energetic yeah charged there in yeah. your lineage which indicates that there probably are quite a few inherited aspects the question now is what as you work on healing those karmic aspects how does that affect your lineage and that is something most people have a hard time wrapping their minds mm -hmm. around and this is um, something I want to point out um, also as being a mom myself Something that I have learned from South American shamans was the way they see um, ancestors. They say our children are our ancestors and our ancestors are our children, which basically represents the same thing that I talked about earlier, you know, with the past, the present and the future being at the same time. Mm -hmm. So what we do when we work on our iconic lineage aspects, on the inherited aspects there, is not only healing ourselves. This is much bigger mm -hmm. than just trying to heal ourselves. We are healing our lineage seven generations back. And most importantly, as parents, we are healing those aspects for our children. In other words, we basically disrupt the karmic wheel, the karmic cycle, and prevent those aspects to be inherited to our children. This is a huge one. So yeah. anyone who has children or wants to have children, from our perspective, really should engage in active karma work. It's not just about you. It's about the entire sort of tie-in. And you can even you know, draw the circle larger and uh, look at it from a collective mm -hmm. perspective. Each and every one of us who heals just one karmic aspect contributes to healing to the collective karmic debt. Yep. All right. Thank you so much, Julian. We have to move on to the next questions. <laughs> so thanks for breaking the silence here. <laughs> thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Um, the next question uh, is uh, a written question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um question is how might karmic links relate to how we create our own reality it's a good question a lot of times the karmic links we have set up our reality we come to this planet and this plane or this existence to do work and if you look at the life we have right now and, and the current situation we live in you know depending upon your energetic level it can be um, stunningly amazing it can be demonic it can be scary whatever you want to call it but there is a great potential where we live right now to go through a tremendous amount of change in a very short time frame. So in reality, what happens is the karmic links we have is basically what we do to pull to us. So if I have a karmic debt towards femininity or karmic debt towards masculinity, I'm going to pull to me or set up based upon how I've created things in my life, people I need to go through things with. So that's kind of the answer there. So if I have an issue, and a lot of times you'll see this with relationships, it, you know, a lot of guys, and you can reverse this for men, women, have um, issues with femininity. 
uh, due to, you know, issues with mom, you would call mommy for mommy problems, whatever. So they'll, they'll go out and find a person who is very similar to mom or the opposite of mom to date. And that's so they have the greatest potentiality to go through the processes that they need to, to heal the karma that they have. The official statistics in that, by the way, are 80, 85% of us pick a partner that resembles mm -hmm. um, the caretaker or parent that we have the most, um, the strongest karmic tie with. Yep. And that's not too shocking if you realize that most of our lives we are projected upon as to what we should go find. So the person you're around, which is usually mom when you're young or dad, you're projected upon that over and over again, plus what they like, what situations you're in, where you live, et cetera. So it gets set up very quickly. So in reality, the karmic links we have do set up a reality to a point. Um, but they can also yeah. alter our perception. Exactly. Um, someone at, uh, at the Transcodes of uh, Facebook this morning commented on the subject and said, it's about illuminating the blind spots we have. Um, because what can happen with the karmic ties, especially um, if you think about examples of victimhood, somebody who has experienced abuse mm -hmm. several times in their life, the way they view their world will be through the eyes of mm -hmm. some of a victim and the world will be hostile and it will be repeated and reconfirmed mm -hmm. over and over again. So that's the manifestation yep. aspect of unresolved karmic aspects is that it can seriously alter our perception. And we call this false perception because false not in the sense of bad or anything, false in the sense of based on our um, ego perspective, based on how our ego wants to see things. So yes, um, very much so. Yes. It very much so influences our um, reality. And one last thing too on that, you know, you will continue to pull the same thing to you many times until you do try to change. And sometimes it takes several times to do it anyway. Sometimes you have to go through a few relationships of friends or loved ones or um, uh, romantic partners to get through processes. So it's very common and great question. Yeah, thank you for asking thank that. You. We need to move on to yep. the next question. The next one is... Sometimes I feel completely disconnected from life, mostly when I'm alone or not engaged with other people. Could this be related to karma? How do you reconnect? I want to. Cool. Okay. Um, That's not an easy question to right. answer because, I mean, you're talking to us as energy workers who help people to reconnect. Right. <laughs> and to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter if it's karmic or not right. in the first place. What matters is to work on the inner connection. Mm -hmm. So, yes, some people need constant company, need constant distraction, constant people around them to not feel this aloneness. But the truth of the matter is, is that we all feel that way mm -hmm. if we are not connected within. So this is the core of our work is to help people to reconnect to that part. And then what happens is that our relationships begin to change. Our circumstances begin to change. And we attract different kinds of people. We attract circumstances that promote the inner connection, that help us to feel when we are connected, when we're not connected. So in a way, yes, it has to do with karma, but more in the, the other way around. We are creating a new karma for us or for ourselves by reconnecting within. And reconnection should always, or actually connection should always be your foundation. If you're not connected, everything is going to feel askew. Um, or you're going to be in your ego or your emotion or your minds, or your mind, excuse me. So the trick is make that your foundation. And as you do, Everything else begins to change. Okay, the next question is regarding karmic relationship okay. aspects. Okay. And um, this is why I put this poll up. Um, uh, do you believe you have or you had a karmic relationship in your past? Um, actually, that's a very nice hmm. um, the result there. It's 100%. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that is probably the case. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, most of our relationships are karmic. And in the course of the karmic inner work, 
we learn to break free from those things. Karmic relationships are not necessarily bad, mm -hmm. but what they do is they create ties and it, they make it very difficult for us sometimes to break free. They make it very difficult for us to, like, say, just as a really simple example, I'm married and I'm very unhappy because um, things keep on happening over and over and over again, but I just can't break free. And very often the reason for that is uh, our karmic ties. Mm -hmm. So by, by beginning to work on those karmic ties and, to, and clear them and increase the heart connection, we begin to become more confident in understanding which of our relationships are karmic and which are not. And we can um, begin to feel more free to discern relationships, whether we want them or not. So the next question ties in with that. Mm -hmm. And you want to read this? Sure. When you meet someone from a past life and the energy is so impacting and you can't recover from it, how do you get over it? In quotations, get over it. Um, That's a good question. It's, it's a very good question. And, you know, there's many ways to look at that one because, and again, I'll, I'll warn you, the past life stuff can be tricky because sometimes it's just, a remembrance of an energy it doesn't necessarily mean that they're in a past life with you. They may have been, they may not have been. Um, because if you go wide enough and broad enough without going into a whole different tangent here, you can go into pretty much any past life of anyone. Um, the key thing to remember with those really deep connections that feel like a repeat or a reconnection from a different life is just to understand that there's a, a deep karmic situation there probably that needs to be looked at. And the trick with how do you get over it? Well, like any situation, because most karmic issues deal with um, ego, emotions, et cetera, is to find out what are you getting out of by staying in it? Yeah. What is the pattern that keeps repeating? What does your ego get out of um, being in it? Sometimes it's control. Sometimes it's manipulation. Sometimes it's comfort. Um, sometimes it's um, normalcy or feeling like the same repeat. You have to realize that, like Jonas said about, I think it was 85% you said pick mm -hmm. people that are similar to their um, their um, opposite sex uh, parent. Same goes with breaking out of karmic patterns. About only 15% really try to break out of karmic patterns. So to do that, anytime you feel stuck with any type of karmic situation, you can always ask yourself from an ego standpoint, what is it that I get out of this? If I go into my own past a little bit, um, when I was very young, I fell in love very early and I got hurt by that loss because she broke up with me and whatever. That was just when I was very, very young. And because of that, I started to choose people that not only were like my, my mother to a degree, but also people that I could control, uh, because I thought to if I could control, pain, exactly to prevent the pain of having that happen again, if I was better than them, or if I felt I have control or I was superior to them, it didn't matter to me if they walked away or not because I was controlling it. So in that situation, what did I get out of it? I felt safe. I felt in control. I felt uh, comfortable. I could provide well. I could take care of them. I could show them a form of lower energetic love um, that I thought was good at the point because I was in my ego. So how do I get out of that? You have to let go of the illusion that I was in control. Uh, I also have to let go um, the thought that I could get hurt. I have to be open and vulnerable. So those are the questions you have to ask yourself is how uh, or what do I get out of being in this process over and over again? I see other aspects there mm -hmm. too. Sure. Um, well, one of the things that I um, observe the most when it comes to karmic relationships is that people make it special. Mm -hmm. And that kind of ties in with what uh, Jeff just mentioned in regards to um, ego payoff. You know, what may the payoff be? Well, specialness can be one of them. Mm -hmm. um, so the first thing we recommend to people is not to make any of this special. Right. Um, the second thing is um, to go in a little more discerning and um, possibly investigate other aspects than karmic aspects. Because sometimes the reason why we can't get over a person is not so much karmic but because they're projecting, mm -hmm. they're or holding on, or we are, we are projecting because they're holding on to us, mm -hmm. or we are holding on to them. So a lot of this um, <laughs> is a bit more complex than just to say, well, we met in our past life, and that's why we have the strong tie. Well, to be honest with you, um, 
that seems like pretty unhealthy to me. That's toxic. If you cannot break free from a relationship in this life, whether it's been from a past life or not, doesn't really matter. That what matters is, is that there are some energetic ties there and they need to investi- need to be investigated or just sort of broadband cleared so that you have a chance to live your life free and based on what you want in this lifetime. That's your sovereignty. That's your birthright. All right. So regardless of whether you feel ties with people from past lives or from other dimensions or we've heard it all. If it restricts you, if it limits you, that means it's not good for you. And that means it needs to be cleared. Right. And one last thing on that. Typically when the word can't is involved, it's a won't. Just remember that. There's a won't there and that's usually from that part you want to let go. We have another follow-up question. Yeah, the last question here, because yep. we've got to wrap it up very yes. soon. Wow. Yeah. Um, it seems especially difficult to move on when you have a strong connection with a person's higher self aspects. Um, for example, a, Ro- a Roman soldier who has come in for you and you feel a strong love for them, as well as their Luna self and feeling that person's feelings. Um, you're getting into kind of some of the Luna stuff and some of the – um, multi-dimensional. multidimensional aspects of it. And, you know, those ties can be very, um, for lack of a better word, intense when they do happen, because they can happen. You can have this deep connection with a person on multiple levels and multiple dimensions. Uh, but again, going back to that, what Yona talked about when I talked about is it's what is it that's keeping you in that? Because even though you have those ties, it does not necessarily mean that you have to have any type of relationship with the person. Um, it just means that you have a connection at some certain levels. And the question becomes more the connections and what are they as opposed to the dimensionality aspect of it. Yeah. So how do they feel to you? Yeah, exactly. Well, how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel good? Does it make you expand? Does it help you to connect right. with yourself or does it limit you? Does it contract your energy? Does it, um, uh, somehow, um, influence you in a way that you cannot really be free? Mm-hmm. That's what you need to look at. It doesn't matter where the tie is from. Right. If it limits you, it's got to go. Right. <laughs> and if it's something that broadens, you know, your perspective or your experience, then it's something that you can think about, you know, engaging into. Mm-hmm. But in from a karmic perspective, it really doesn't matter. It's mm-hmm. not special. If we go into um, this multidimensional realm, we will discover hundreds of relationships that we had. And they may or may not have impacted our energy at some point in our sort of energetic history. But that doesn't mean that they um, have to influence or limit us right now. What matters is that we become sovereign in our energy today. And not allow. To, uh, am I pronouncing this right? I didn't wrong? Hear the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, sovereignty is that not sovereignty? You, no, sovereign. So sovereign. Sovereign. Okay, yes. that's how you pronounce it. <laughs> what matters is that we become sovereign in our energy and not allow any tie or any relationship to overwrite, as uh, Julian said it earlier, um, our present life. Mm-hmm. Because no matter what, no matter how many karmic or past life or multidimensional relationships we can detect in this work, each morning we're going to wake up in this body, in this life, and this is what it's all about. And one thing to help with that real quick, because those multidimensional aspects can get really intense sometimes, and you know, and I both have been through those kind of things. Um, Remember that visions or things you see or experience typically are symbologies. They're symbols that show us things. Um, you don't want to get too wrapped up into the actual vision itself because then you're going to get pulled off into multiple things. So the key thing to remember is that's symbology and that can really help sometimes too with that. All right. We hope uh, that answering those questions 
Great uh, question. Helped a little bit. Um, just to uh, <laughs> wrap this up, um, Transcodes offers a lot of those tools mm -hmm. um, in direct work with us in uh, group transmissions. Um, we have a, a self healing course where we dive into all these aspects. Um, we have, um, again, the um, healing circles, which, um, by the way, we didn't get to cover, um, goes into the gender-specific aspects of our journey, um, because there are aspects that women and men perceive differently. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've separated men and women in those healing circles, so that we can discuss these aspects in our healing forms, um, just from that perspective, just from the female and just from the male perspective. Um, if you would like to join um, our healing circle tomorrow, um, it's taking place at 11 a.m. our time, Denver time. So um, that's um, you have to translate that into your time zone. Um, we'd be more than happy to have you there. Yes. And uh, we want to thank you all for joining Definitely. this webinar, the first one out of many to come. And uh, uh, there will be a recording. Um, available of this uh, webinar for you, which you uh, will get sent, uh, I think, like in about an hour or something. Um, if you would like to sign up for the remote uh, women's or men's healing circle tomorrow, it's $35 a person um, for one hour. And uh, this is the link uh, that you can go to. Thank you so much. Thank everyone. you very much. Thank you.